what was supposed to be a review of the splendid 2100 XC 2-in-1 washer has now turned into a troubleshooting video. And if we can't get it fixed with help from tech support, I hear that the drums in these washers make a great fire pit. Welcome back to the RVR Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. Long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. It is. And in these last nine months in our RVing adventure, I have been raving about having a washer-dryer combo on the RV. It's a lifesaver. But in a turn of events, we've had issues with it. So we're going to tell you the story about the issues, give you the pros and cons, tell you a little bit about the washer-dryer, and tell you the stuff that we've been learning the hard way. I was shocked to see all the questions that we get from the RV Odd Squad asking about how our washer and dryer works. Now, I don't use this. Mercedes does all the laundry in a home and I'm very grateful for that. But I was really surprised at how interested people were about how these things work. So in today's video, we're gonna share how it works. Mercedes is gonna take you through typical laundry day. She's gonna show you how long it takes. She's gonna show you what the clothes look like when they come out. You'll learn why I wear these shirts all the time. It's wrinkle free. Don't have to do anything with it. All of our other clothes are pretty much wrinkly. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna talk about the pros and cons. We're gonna talk about other options for laundry solutions. We're gonna talk about the cost. How much does this thing cost us and how much did it save us? And ultimately, we're gonna talk about if we would do it again, if we would have gotten this, or would we have gone a different route? Yeah, because the fact that I had to bring John in on a laundry video tells you that there's problems, right? Because he's really good at fixing things. So thankfully, he stepped in and he's like, honey, we're gonna... <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> right, so we're also gonna include a phone call to tech support. We did not tell them that we are on YouTube because we didn't think that that would be a fair representation of how they're going to help us. We wanted to show you exactly what it is like to deal with Splendid customer service. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about how long each load takes. So you're gonna come with me on a typical laundry day and we're gonna time the loads. So my goal for today is to do the laundry and just measure the time. So those are my bleaches and that's color. Just show you how much laundry I have to do. But the thing with these ones is that you have to do the loads in smaller batches. This is about half full. That's actually what you want because I've noticed that when I've tried to fill it, I don't know if it all gets wet. Detergent goes in here. Fabric softener goes in here. And this is for bleach. I'm gonna hit on, I'm gonna hit start. Now you can see it was drying. I'm gonna hit start again. All right, there you go. You hear the water, you see the wash light on. So we're good to go. And the time is 11.47 a.m. Well now it is 2.25. We'll see how dry it is. It's, it's pretty dry. And then on to the next load. We are on to our second load at 2.29 p.m. Check, all right, it's 4.22. It's in the drying cycle, but I wanna check and see. Nope, it's still pretty wet. It's 5.22. Let's see if load number two is fully dry. Yes. No, it's still really wet. Having to run the dryer multiple times to get the laundry clean is not entirely abnormal. All right, it's 7.06. We're gonna check on this laundry. Okay, it's kind of dry. So here's the tricky thing about when the laundry isn't all the way dry. If I dry it all the way, the wrinkles get settled in. I was really hoping I'd be starting the towels now, but it is what it is. Now I'm going to take these clothes and I am going to lay them flat on the bed and they'll be dry and wrinkle free very soon. Look everyone, proof that John has more than <laughs> one of these shirts. 751. Let's see if the laundry is ready. It's pretty close to dry. All right, so I'm gonna take what's left. I'm going to lay them flat on the bed. Then we're gonna do a load of towels. I usually like to do this load last at night because I add bleach to it. I notice that if it's not all the way dry in the morning, it doesn't get that musty smell because of the bleach. Now, a note for the bleached loads, you actually need to do them on the super so I'm gonna move the dial to one and add the bleach. All right, so it's 1016. This load is obviously not going to get done, so I'm gonna start a long dry cycle and hopefully it will be dry by the time we wake up. This is how much laundry is left. 
I have done one load of whites, two loads of colors, and I have one load of colors left. So next, I wanna talk about the different options that you have for laundry solutions in an RV. The first is by hand, which was not an option for me, especially with the toddler. The next is using a laundromat, which for some, that's a viable option. Not but for me. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people take the worst of their laundry, like rugs and, and pet pillows to the laundromat. So we did want to avoid that. And with a toddler, I would have been literally doing laundry at the laundromat my whole life. So right. And I'm a fair. germaphobe. I don't like that. Now, the next option that we didn't realize is some people actually bring residential washers and dryers in. And I didn't even know that was an option. The negative side of it is that it takes up more room, but it never occurred to me that we could bring residential appliances I didn't even think of it either you know and of course you will have to deal with managing the electric right so on a hot day you don't want to be running your dryer which takes a lot of amperage while you're running your acs and on our week we have two ac units so we would really have to be careful if we had the residential size washer and dryer to manage our electric so that our acs would not be effective but i know we can do it on a 50 amp wouldn't be a problem if we were on a 30 amp site that would be an issue that we would have to work out and so what we're going to focus on in this video is the two-in-one, which I thought that was the only RV option. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons to the two-in-one. One of the cons is that you have to do small batches, and I'm still figuring out what a small batch is. But if you don't do small batches, laundry comes out wrinkly. And sometimes even when you do try to do small batches, the laundry is still wrinkly. The next con is that the laundry does take a long time. As you saw in the typical laundry day, each load takes a while. So the best tip is to always stay on top of laundry. Don't let it pile up. The next option, of course, would be to take it to the coin laundry center that is typically in every park that we visit. The problem with that is the cost can be anywhere from two to four dollars for a load, right? So times that times three to five loads a week over a month, over a year, you're gonna spend a fortune. And obviously it's a lot more relaxing to do your laundry at home and not have to go to the local laundromat to do it. And the other con that John alluded to was the energy management. With just one machine, we can pop the breaker if we're on a 30 amp. So I cannot even imagine what a separate washer and dryer unit would do. But the pros, I get to do the laundry in my home. I only had to pay for the laundry machine once. I'm not constantly adding that to the budget. So tips, because this machine does make the whole RV shake, would be stabilizers and x chocks. Those yeah. do help reduce the shake a lot. But if you don't want people knocking at the door, don't bother using that. Your RV will be shaking all the time and nobody will come knocking. All right, so everything was fine in our laundry universe. I was loving my machine. I was doing about one load every other day, trying to keep up. And for it the takes most... about three hours to do it, but outside of that, we were getting our laundry done. We bought this in August, so it's been over a year now, right? And then I started getting this issue. It was this weird blinking light and the laundry wasn't drying. Thank goodness I kept the owner's manual, which is a big tip. Keep the owner's manuals to everything you've got in the RV. The first workaround was just to unplug it 40 seconds, let it reset, plug it back in and see if that works. Well, we've done that about 20 million times. It hasn't worked. <laughs> it hasn't. So we had to call tech support. So we called tech support, asked them what we could do. I looked in the pamphlet and they say if it gives you an error message to call technical support. We're going to call them and see what happens. You have reached the technical support department. All of our representatives are on other calls. Please hold and someone will be with you shortly. So that many people are struggling with their washer and dryer uh, not too. Not a good sign. <laughs> I see a project in daddy's future. Hey. Three minutes and 48 Check seconds. Are you okay um, I guess. Well, if they don't give good customer service, I'd rather know and tell everyone that, you know? Shane's here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. That's my son. Yep. Well, come on in. Oh, oh sweet. Hi, Shane. Oh, Hi. Hi. Are you recording me? Yeah. Sure. Are you okay holding? No, I'm not. How much longer do you think it'll be? I, I don't know, ma'am. I can certainly take a message and have them call you back, or you can continue yes. to hold. I will get them the message. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Uh-huh. Bye-bye. They did send us some email instructions on what they thought would be a fix, and that's what we're going to try to do. 
And so John had to help me with the fix because it was not working for me. This is what Splendid sent us because we haven't been able to dry our clothes. The system keeps on freezing up. So they sent us these reset instructions that haven't worked so far. First step is you gotta go find this stuff, A Fresh tablets. Now make sure you keep this away from the kids. There's some nasty stuff in this. They do have a poison control phone number on here, so be super, super careful with this. So there's gotta be some kind of acid or something on it. Okay, so we're gonna put it on 11, and we're gonna hit start. That soap stuff inside, that tablet I just put in, is bubbling like Alka-Seltzer at the bottom of this. Once a month, you should clean this rig out. Now we're hoping that this thing goes to one third. So, I don't know, is that a third, guys? Doesn't look like a third. Maybe they should show you a diagram of what a third looks like. But we're gonna go ahead and let this process run out and hopefully this works. Till it all lights up. Okay. All right, then you move it to 12. Move it to 12. Then you hit start again. And then you hit extra rinse. Right here, yep, hold it. it. Yep, just hit it once. There. So now it's refilling with water. Well, it certainly hasn't done this before. That stuff is cleaning the inside of the unit. It certainly looks a lot cleaner than it has in the past when we've tried to rinse it. This is be the rinse cycle. All right, so would we get this machine again? John, what do you think? No, I wouldn't get this machine again. I would have went with the full size residential or maybe a smaller size residential. We are gonna start doing our homework on a different unit. I don't know if this is going to be fixed. Right now, it's working fine. We're both very, very grateful. Once again, timing for us, right? We have somebody watching over us because this thing literally broke right as we got to Denver, Colorado, and we're mooch docking at uh, Mercedes' mom's house, grandma's house, right? So we had laundry to take care of it. Now we're getting ready to go on the road again. We're hoping that this fix works. We will let you know. At least the saws not, is not coming out today. Maybe in a later video, we'll saws all it open if it doesn't work. So if you enjoyed the video on RV laundry, you're probably in the market for other RV upgrades. In the next video, we're gonna cover the RV upgrades we love, the ones we hate, and the ones we wish we had. See you in the next video, guys.